No intro, let's get on with the video. This video is based on the skill to award ratio with 5 pieces of criteria, which many of you already know, being sustain, range, mobility, utility and damage. Sustain refers to how much damage the tank can absorb whilst holding or taking space. Range refers to the distance at which the tank can pressure at. Mobility refers to the speed or movement the tank can use to pressure with. Utility is basically any resource that isn't healing or damage, like space or attention, and damage is just how much pressure they can exert. For clarity, I will be starting off with the hardest heroes to rank up with, and will slowly be getting easier and easier. In last place, which should come as no surprise to anyone, I have Doomfist. Doomfist right now is not in a great state, and seems to be receiving nerf after nerf, despite being what I think, in an almost perfect state of balance when he was first reworked. Before I rage about the many flaws with Doomfist, I want to state that he does have one redeeming strength, being his mobility. Now you likely already know from Get Quaked On, that the tech regarding Doom's mobility has basically been Thanos snapped. <laughs> However, even with this change to Doomfist, his mobility still remains as one of the strongest in the tank category because of how surgical it is. When I mean surgical, I mean instantaneous. Doom can instantly engage and disengage thanks to the short cooldown on his punch, whilst also providing decent burst damage up close thanks to his shotgun pellets, making Doomfist a rather decent duelist. However, that's all Doomfist really has. The slowing effect from Doom Slam was removed quite a while ago, his power block is a gimmicky defense tool as you can't really block any CC with it, and all you need to do to counter Doomfist is to pick Roadhog and maybe Sombra if you're still struggling. Doom essentially has all his eggs in one basket, being mobility. He has no range threat, his utility is just the space he creates in nature of being a tank, and his sustain isn't quite up to par to his dive tank counterparts like Ball, Winston or D.Va, making Doomfist a tricky pick to rank up with, especially if you plan on one-tricking him. But before I move on, I'm glad to say that this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is the first game to bring a true console level experience to your phone. With over 600 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your team and you can raid your way. One of my favourite champions is Athalia, with her many time meter manipulation skills and incredibly powerful heal, being able to bring entire teams back from the brink of defeat, and her third skill being that she strips off enemy buffs, letting you take down those hard to kill arena teams. Another great champion is Raglin, the best reviver in raid. She revives a single target, fills their turn meter, and gives them a bit of health. But she's also the fastest survivor in the game, and can also remove all debuffs and heal all allies. And right now, Raid's running an amazing trick or treat promotion Halloween, where you can win a bunch of real life and in-game prizes, including $1,000 Amazon gift cards, and some of the best epic and legendary Halloween champions in Raid. The best part, it's all free and it's super easy. All you need is your Raid player ID. Just download Raid with my link in the description, then head to trickortreat.playroom.com, and to make it even easier, I link that in the description too. From there, just enter your details and spin the wheel and get your prize. That's it. Don't wait around, this special event runs from October the 15th to November 5th, and once it's over, it's over, so you better be fast. There's seriously never been a better time to get started, but there's more. You can also use the DK Riders promo code for a bunch of free items to instantly level any of your strongest champions all the way to level 50, 5 star ascension. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen and you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Burgess, 200,000 silver, 1 energy refill and 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard, so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here, and it's that easy. Just click the link in the description and I'll see you in game. Moving on to second to last place, I have Junker Queen. Now, if you ask most content creators, they'll likely say that Junker Queen isn't in a great state right now. She's by no means unusable, but nowhere near as full on meta as she was from release. Junker Queen's power, even from release, was honed into her utility and high potential damage. Her ultimate, even with Kiriko in the game right now, is still one of the strongest tank ultimates, basically guaranteeing a free 100 damage per target you hit, as long as there isn't a Kiriko on the board. Her commanding shout and the bleed from her carnage also give her a decent chunk of sustain to hold on to. But her issue, likewise to Reinhardt who I'll get onto, is her lack of mobility and or range. Which is mainly why many amateur coaches, including myself, couldn't predict the jokes meta in the summer showdown. But now, with the nerfs to utility in her commanding shout, you'll start seeing the effects of a hero having neither great range or great mobility. Her damage is highly dependent on Drunker Queen getting up close, but with having the lowest tank HP pull in the game, and having the safe commanding shout to use defensively due to the lengthy 15 second cooldown, Drunker Queen remains at most a situational pick based on the map and heroes chosen. Moving on to 8th place, I have Reinhardt. 
Thankfully, I am happy to say that Reinhardt is a much better hero than he was compared to Overwatch 1, and you could argue that Reinhardt can be placed a few spots higher. Both his mobility and range are better than an Overwatch 1, with his more controllable pin, which you can now cancel, as well as having two fire strikes. However, likewise the Jungle Queen covered prior, Reinhardt still has deficits in his range and mobility, which make him a hard tank to rank up with. To help explain this further, you as a Reinhardt can basically do nothing against the top 3 DPS right now, being Sombra, Genji and Sojourn. You as Reinhardt haven't got enough utility or mobility to help your backline being traded out by a Sombra or Genji, and you haven't got enough range or mobility to deal with Sojourn one-shotting your teammate halfway across the map. However, it's not all doom and gloom. Reinhardt is one of, if not, the most tankiest tank in the game thanks to his armor HP pool, a 1200 HP shield, and the buff to armor decreasing all damage by a flat 30%. His damage is also comparable to Junker Queen, but likewise to his Australian counterpart, the issue is closing the distance to do that close range damage. And whilst it is easier to do this in Overwatch 2 compared to Overwatch 1, it's still not optimal. Over to 7th place, we have Wrecking Ball. Since my first tank list, Ball has dropped a few places thanks to a very fun hero to play against being Sombra. Now I'm sure Sombra will be receiving nerfs in the future, but even then, I'd be lying if I said that playing Ball against Sombra is a fun experience. Wrecking Ball is already one of the hardest heroes in the game mechanically speaking, and is still decently tough from a gameplay perspective, but what saves Ball in my books is him having a much higher potential than the heroes below him. Ball has undoubtedly the best tank mobility in the entire game, being a solid duelist as well as managing to keep up with the faster pacing of Overwatch 2. His damage is also respectable and has higher carry potential than the tanks below him. It's just a shame that heroes like Sombra exist because you can certainly play Ball and win games with ease if she isn't on the field. Next up, we have Arisa. I feel that with Arisa's buff to her stats, she is kind of a better and easier Reinhardt. She has more range, and she as a hero technically has more sustain than Reinhardt thanks to her fortifying spear spin, but she obviously has no shield. Arisa thrives in close range brawls, meaning she can more easily land her javelin, which can be teamfight winning if landed on a squishy target. The only thing preventing Orisa from climbing higher up in the rankings is really her carry potential. She hasn't quite got the damage compared to someone like Zarya to carry her games, not to mention her Jupiter-sized head hitbox, meaning you often take more damage than you think. And when you have no vertical mobility to contest off angles, alongside a mediocre range, you kind of need more impactful damage that a hero like Reinhardt does have over Orisa. Let's not even get onto how bad Orisa's terror surge is. Moving into the top 5, we have Winston. Now I think there's certainly an argument for Winston to be both higher or lower. On paper, he seems like he doesn't have very much carry potential. His ultimate is one of the most difficult ultimates to master in Overwatch, he requires a ton of game sense to know what decision to make, and now of all the tanks I've covered so far, he seems to have the least amount of damage. So why is he even here in the first place? Well, I'm here to argue that Winston is currently a safer and better pick than Wrecking Ball. They both have high mobility and are both high skill, high reward heroes, but it's really the utility of Winston's bubble that makes him a safer pick. An 800 HP barrier when diving a squishy target is a massive boon for Winston, especially when compared to Overwatch 1 when his bubble was weaker and there was an extra player on the field to destroy that bubble. Winston also finally has some range in his long range zap, allowing him to finish low HP targets without having to sacrifice himself. Whilst the stats card doesn't show it, Winston's ability to carry games and isolate squishy targets with relative ease helps him sneak into the top 5. Just missing out on the top 3, we have Roadhog. Now I did call Roadhog as being the worst Overwatch 2 hero a while back, and whilst I still think he's one of the worst tanks at the highest level of play, being Overwatch League or Overwatch Contenders, he can certainly work in the uncoordinated shitfest that is ranked Overwatch. Arna's Biotic Grenade used to be one of Hog's biggest counters because it would completely deny his self heal, but now with Kiriko in the game, her Suzu can deny things like Nade, Hack, and Sleep Dart. I also initially put forth the argument that in Overwatch 2, Hog would not be able to flank because there is no other tank to draw attention away from the Roadhog. But, after seeing some high level Hog play, Hog can still flank, but the key is that it has to be in the mid fight. Hopefully some of the background gameplay shows us off, but Hog just plays main initially to bait attention, then as the team fight breaks out, he starts flanking. So what is Hog missing? 
Sure, he hasn't got great mobility, but with solid sustain, range, and high damage stats, it's quite tough to find a bone to pick with Hog. Well, that's until you meet Zarya and Diva, two tanks who are currently above Hog. Zarya can bubble off any hooks and just beam you on high charge, and Diva can obviously DM your hooks and nuke you with her boosters and micro missiles up close. But, fortunately for Hog, he still has enough pros to outweigh the cons to land himself in the top 4. Now entering the top 3, we have Sigma. I often like to think of Sigma as a more versatile Roadhog. Both have 20 meter ranges, both provide high poke damage, and both have ways of mitigating damage. However, Sigma can often hold angled pressure more than Roadhog thanks to his shield and a significantly stronger ultimate and flux, which can also allow him to take positions where he wouldn't normally be able to play from. Really, it's Sigma's squishiness as a hero and how hard it can be to hit hyperspheres against more slim targets that prevent him from climbing up further. Now onto D.Va. D.Va is one of the hardest heroes to master in the game, there's no doubt about that. But the reason why D.Va is in the top 2 is that even a subpar D.Va can still do a ton in the game because of how powerful she is right now. Her armor, mobility and burst damage means that she can destroy a backline support in just seconds as Boga quite eloquently demonstrates. That bot is a Zen. You're dead! But you're like, okay, we can kill her! No, just 4 second cooldown, 4 second matrix, and then she flies away for 2 seconds! And obviously, her 4 second matrix gives her enough time to play aggressively and leave with no consequence. Really, D.Va is just a jack of all trades hero, with her only deficit being in range, but her other 4 stats more than make up for it. Even after D.Va received some nerfs by the balance team, she would still remain in the top 5 because of her unprecedented ability to mark off angles, thanks to the utility in her matrix, burst damage in her micro missiles, and mobility in her boosters. Lastly, in first place, which some of you may have already guessed before clicking on this video, we have Zarya. It's a quick edit postscript about Zarya, Apparently patch notes for these heroes were leaked by contenders on Twitter, but the person who leaked it is backtracking, but some people in contenders themselves aren't backtracking, so yeah, I just thought I'd put this in here. Even if these patch notes were true, and they were to go through, with the changes being to Zarya's bubble duration, and the cooldown being increased, she would still remain in top 3 in my eyes. The obvious thing about Zarya is of course her insanely high damage in the tank category, but the more important thing is how easy it is to get high energy on Zarya. For those who don't know, Zarya's bubbles got increased in duration from 2 to 2.5 seconds, despite having a quicker energy drain rate compared to Overwatch 1. A high charged Zarya playing an aggressive position with a bubble or two to save Zarya if things get hairy is pretty much unstoppable. Her grab is also typically a free team fight win if used correctly, and if not, the enemy team likely use an ultimate of their own. Also, not to mention, Zarya does have increased mobility from Overwatch 1 thanks to the buff to her rocket jumps, meaning you can actually get to some positions that you couldn't have gotten to prior in Overwatch 1, and if not, you at least get to these positions faster. Even better, Zarya's main issue being her mobility can be fixed by Zarya bubbling her teammates who do have mobility like Reaper or Genji. Just make sure that you're bubbling Reaper or Genji when they actually go in. Well that's the video, if you enjoyed be sure to like, comment and subscribe, and if this video helped to raise your IQ, be sure to share it with your friends to also raise theirs. Until next time.